Hello, Bill Molino here, Fast Play War Games, Nottingham War Gaming Group, and something totally different. All right, well, we know that I do miniature war gaming, and we know I also do board war games and games designs, mostly in the French Indian War period. But I also do living history and French Indian War reenacting. I have an event coming up, in fact, several. Uh, May 5th through the uh, 8th uh, at Fort Halifax, Pennsylvania. I thought uh, I'd do a little video on uh, the different uh, items that uh, we use in reenacting. Besides the muskets, well, all French soldiers have a, a white shirt and it, uh, are, for me, for this event, I'll be portraying French Malice, which is militia. So I have a, my trusty white shirt, and then a vest, which is called the gilet. It has no sleeves. And I have a button to put on. First event, major event of the season. So I have my gilet. Now over the gilet, I have what's called a vesti. So the French army stayed warm with the... So that's my vestie. Now if it's really cold at Fort Halifax, I have what's called a capot, a blanket coat. It goes all the way from the, my head with a hood, big long cuffs, and it'll go all the way down to my feet and cover me up, and it's called a blanket coat or a capot. So, French Malice most often wore a breech clout, which is basically a wool diaper. However, I might have some new French Malice coming, and they may not be uh, totally comfortable wearing the the. Uh, I'm uh, thinking of some funny stories where people have had uh, their breech clouts fall off during combat. Um, and yes, you don't wear underwear underneath your breech clout. So for those people that are concerned about their breech clout coming off, I will have some breeches. Now the French army did not issue canteens. We use gourds. However, British canteens, when available, would be captured. Now the French did have for their line troops a large canteen, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of it, but it would hold several liters of water for a whole company. So we have our, our gourds. Um, when I'm at events, gourds, I get a lot of people ask me, what is that hanging on your shoulder? So to keep our heads warm, we had toques. Um, the red toque is one of the most common, but there's lots of different uh, colors, all of wool. Coming along now, we're getting into some of the weaponry. This is a shot pouch. This carries my cartridges. Of course, uh, got a couple powder horns. Now we have our tomahawk. One of the misconceptions on the tomahawk is it was used as a throwing weapon. Quite often, these were just hand-to-hand -hand combat, and often one side or the other would break and run. Uh, but if you throw your tomahawk away, you're, you don't have it. So throwing the, the tomahawk is more of a movie, movie time uh, thing than actually uh, everyone throwing tomahawks at each other. The war club, which is nice, is uh, used a lot by natives, and some French would use it. The difference between the war club and the tomahawks, where the war club would not get stuck in someone's uh, head, and you have to pry it out. Well, we've covered quite a bit so far, but uh, we have moccasins. Quite often, the French Malice would use these shoes, the seba with the uh, ox hide. And if you were Melisse, also Quebec, Montreal, you could be seen wearing buckled shoes. Now, not quite that often, but 
um, there is documentation that some police would come out in buckled shoes. Now, because you're wearing a breech clout, you need leggings, which are basically leggings. Uh, these are rolled up pairs of leggings. We have a dark blue, purple, white, uh, another pair of gray. And these cover your legs to keep you from getting scratched with uh, uh, briar bushes and stuff when going through the woods. Well, we also have some different items that you'd wear. Uh, this is called your, your neck knife. Uh, you'd wear a neck knife, you'd have a pocket knife, you'd have some kind of a, a pouch that would carry all your odds and ends, some change. The French were Catholic, and having their cross around their neck was important along with some native beads, some wampum, to show that you're uh, friends with the natives. You'd have a sash around your, for your belt to hold your belt knife. And these weren't always necessarily used for combat as much as just survival skills. Uh, now you'd have some tools to work on your musket and believe it or not, even in May and June, it gets cold in the hills of western Pennsylvania. So you'd have a pair of uh, gloves of some type. Now because I'm getting ready for the event, we uh, always think of safety. So our black powder and ammunition is carried in um, you know, a safety box such as this. Now the next and final thing is muskets. I have uh, several muskets, and this one here is a Charleville, 1728. This is the cow's hoof musket. You got to take it apart and get it cleaned up. And this is a late uh, model. Uh, French line troops would not be using this. It's got a larger stock, and it's an older model. However, they would give this to the milice, the militia, or the standard fowler, as the British would call it, or a fusee, D chase. And this is the musket you'd bring from home, basically. Normally a 20 gauge. And these are both smooth bores. So this video is entirely different than anything I've done before, for the most part, other than the videos of Conrad Weiser's. But this is more of a detailed explanation. All this stuff is going to get put into a big sack. And my big sack is buried under here. And believe it or not, I can also sleep in this. And it, it's literally, I think it's almost five and a half feet long. It's your French haversack. But you can put all this stuff in it. And it has a belt that goes over your shoulder both your shoulders and you carry it on your back. For a raiding party, like when the French raided uh, Cash Town, the Mary Jemison uh, raid, which is quite famous near Mr. Ed's Elephant Land and Reed's Winery, the Melis and natives would be carrying very little. Uh, they are moving fast, grabbing prisoners and burning down as many crops and buildings as they could. Wow, we are way over. We're almost at 10 minutes. So don't forget to support your historic sites like Fort Ticonderoga, Fort Ligonier. And very soon, my Fort Games will be out at Fort Frederick and Fort Ticonderoga. And I hope uh, they'll be in some other historic sites too. I hope you enjoy this video. It's totally off the wall from anything else I've done. Uh, so... Uh, People like uh, Jack out in Arizona and John up in Binghamton, New York and the Sheriff's Department. I hope you didn't find this too boring to go over the equipment that I'm going to be dragging to Fort Halifax near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, May 7th is the battle. May 6th is the school program with the school kids all day long. Thank you for uh, watching. Stay safe, be kind, be courteous, and I got this done in 10 minutes. Thank you.